Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. All right, Chris Mack, Pittsburgh. How are you, sir? Steve Jones, how are you? Good do- to be with you. Good to be with you. So on your show right now, what are the hot topics? Well, today we were actually at St. Vincent College in Latrobe uh, oh, for the first nice. day of training camp. Now, we get out there, you know, dark and early, not even bright and early, um, <laughs> seeing as we hit the air at 540. Yeah. So we didn't we didn't really get to see anything in the way of workouts or anything like that. But just being on campus and, and being there um, is good uh, for getting a feel for, for what it's like up there and with everyone arriving yesterday. You know, the, the talk this morning when we started our show um, was actually focused on running backs. You know, one, you've yeah. got it, both on and off the field. On field in so much as, you know, Mike Vrabel coming out and saying Derrick Henry isn't going to touch the ball at all in preseason games yesterday for the Titans. You know, how many guys on the Steelers roster are you okay with not seeing during the preseason? And I think Najee Harris is certainly one of those guys. T.J. Watt, Cam Hayward. Um, you could probably add one or two more guys into that list. You know, Minka Fitzpatrick is yeah. on the non uh, the NFI list. Uh, apparently, he had a spill on a bike this summer, uh, but it doesn't sound serious. Um, and you know, a guy like Tyson Alualu, who's also on the pup list, um, re- still recovering from last year's injury. It sounds like um, I- I'm totally fine with all of those guys. We've evolved enough, I think, to the point where. You don't need to see a guy get, you know, uh, a, a half, a three quarters worth of work in one game. And um, we're, we're, we've only got three preseason games worth of snaps now. And those have to be used, I think, at least in Mike Tomlin's mind and a lot of head coaches thinking to evaluate guys 35 through 53 on the roster. And who's going to make, you know, who's going to make the team? Who's going to help you in those spots? Uh, and if you've got guys who you know are going to be on the team, and it's just a matter of getting them physically conditioned and ramped up for the season. You're willing to do that without necessarily putting them in games. Heck, look at TJ Watt last summer. Um, didn't take part in one team drill the entire summer, let alone preseason games, and ended up defensive player of the year and tying the sack record. But one area he's going to have to, this is the first time in his career he's had to pick a quarterback. That uh, is true. And and yeah. so uh, now he's not going to come out and say, hey, we're going to do X amount of snaps with this, this, and this. But how interested are you in the, especially in the first two preseason games, the usage of Mitch Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, and then lastly, Kenny Pickett? Yeah, I I think, you know, the conclusion I've come to after talking to people and listening to feedback from others is that the runway for Kenny Pickett with the Steelers is a whole lot longer than a lot of fans think it should be. A lot of fans, they see you draft a quarterback in the first round. Even if you go out and sign a veteran stopgap, which they did in free agency, they want to see the first round pick right away. And that's just not going to happen here. It's just not. Um, I would venture a guess, a, a pretty well educated guess, that you might not see Pickett at all this year unless Trubisky really struggles at some point. And even then, if Trubisky were to get hurt or really struggle early on in the season and say the first eight to 10 weeks, I don't think Pickett would necessarily be the reliever. I think as long as Rudolph's around, assuming he is around to that point, he might actually be the reliever if Trubisky struggles a lot because they are going to ensure that whenever Kenny Pickett finally sees a regular season NFL snap, he never comes out again. He never has to worry about looking over his shoulder. Is Trubisky going to steal the job back? Or is this guy coming for my job? They're going to give him a long runway So even despite him having that label of most NFL-ready quarterback in the 2022 draft, he's still going to get a long runway. And I wouldn't be the least bit surprised, Steve, if Trubisky has a decent enough year. They go 9-8, and maybe even Mm -hmm. 10-7. and Maybe even, uh, who knows, maybe they win a playoff game, right? Right. Um, And they could do all of that. Heck, they could do everything short of winning a Super Bowl. And I think they go into next offseason – with Trubisky with a year left on his deal and perhaps even showing something good on film this year. And they pull a Garoppolo Lance maneuver and, you know, and they find they can get something for Trubisky and then install Pickett as the starter after, you know, a red shirt season, if we want to call it that. 
um, that wouldn't that wouldn't surprise me in the least. So I think Trubisky more or less. I don't want to say he's won the job already because he hasn't right. really done much to do that. But right. he is he is their their number one quarterback, and it's I think he's going to have to fall flat on his face this preseason. And moreover, once the regular season starts to lose that role, I think I would be surprised if he did fall flat. I think he'd be, I think he's going to actually be good for the Steelers. Yeah, I, I mean, that's I, I just just know, me. It's just a gut feeling. Guy, right? Yeah, he's not the kind of guy who's going to drag a team kicking and screaming to a Super Bowl title, certainly. But with a defense that's capable of being in the top five, despite how bad they were against the run last year, with uh, the offensive weapons around him with uh, some slight improvements in the offensive line, you hope, if if you're uh, the Steelers, at least at right guard and James Daniels. If if they can have all those things come to fruition, well, then, yeah, sure, 10, 10 and 7 and a wild card. Yeah. That's very doable with, with Mitch Trubisky. What Pickett is to the Steelers, in terms of the fans, this is my analogy, mm-hmm. to the fan base, Pickett is to the Steelers what – Drew Aller and Bo Prabula are to Penn State. The fans yes. can't wait to yes. get them out there, and the Steeler fans can't wait to get Kenny Pickett out there. I think that's it's the nature of fan bases when it when it comes to the uh, young player they don't know about. Right, and, and you know the difference being that we know Sean Clifford isn't going to be back next year, right? You know, Mitch Trubisky. Uh, Chris, don't be <laughs> don't be so bold. I'm sorry. That was, that was, a, that was very a very me, forward it? statement on your part. <laughs> Um, and Sean would be the first one laughing with you, by the way. It's, yeah, Sean and no, I have no, this you know. running joke, who's been here longer, him or me? So It's uh, <laughs> it's close. It's, it's, close. it's, it's right closer than people think. <laughs> but, um, no, you're right. Sean's done a great job of embracing that and having yeah. fun with it. So, um, But Trubisky, you know, he's he's got another year on his contract. Yeah. So I, I think that makes him a very marketable asset, to be honest, to the Steelers next offseason if he plays with even the, the slightest modicum of of success this year um now to, to bring it back to the running backs because you asked what we were talking about this morning yeah um, sure quarterbacks are going to be top of mind every sure, single of day of camp people are going to overanalyze every single throw <laughs> yes. that's 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 headline <laughs> that's a one right right if we flip if we flip to, to a two or we go below the fold to use some newspaper terms um the secondary story is how much are they going to have to use Najee harris you know, Najee tells Rich Eisen last week, I'll, I'll take 500 carries if they have to give me 500 carries to win. And then yesterday comes in and says, well, yeah, it'd be nice to have a number two for when I get tired. Yeah. Um, and, and also has some sideways comments about having to live in a dorm for a couple of weeks, which, you know, the people of Latrobe, I'm sure, took very well. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> you know, it, it's it, that, that's something that's a, a very – I am of the mind that a first-round running back – you run his wheels off because you've got him for five years, if not six or even seven, if he's good enough that you're willing to tag him a couple of times. And how, how much longer does a successful NFL running backs career go beyond six or seven years anyway? So, yeah. you know, if you can get away without giving him a second contract, then you do it. And you don't worry about that second contract until the time comes three years, two years from now to pick up the final year option on his rookie deal. He'll, he'll do more than show he's already done more uh, than enough to show that he's worthy of picking up the fifth year option on his contract. I think it's just a matter of how much, how much tread is on the tires and does he end up say a year from now looking like a guy who's greatly affected by that late in the season, right. or does he look like a guy who thrives on that? You know, Jerome Bettis, for example, in the, at the peak of his career, and I know Najee doesn't like to be compared to Jerome Bettis, but tough. Um, <laughs> Jerome Bettis was a guy who thrived on the workload, thrived on punishing defenders. Najee's not as big as the bus was, but he's certainly strong. He can certainly punish defenders at times. And does he thrive off that? Does he become a guy who in the fourth quarter is is running downhill and linebackers and safeties dread the idea of having to wrap him up because they know they're going to get run over? Uh, Or does he become the guy who wears out come, you know, mid to late December and into January? I think that's something we find out this year. Yeah, the bus has always been an interesting case for me. Uh, I've always admired his durability I've always mm-hmm. admired that he would go out and every game, same story over and over again. But I've always gone back to with him the the, the negative. 
is the 3.9 yards per carry in his career. And by the way, what did he average in the playoffs? 3.9 yards yeah. per rush. And guess what? Any team that has a guy that's averaging 3.9 yards per carry probably isn't with the team in two years. And yet he kept, you know, uh, but I admired the durability. It's just the, the stats were built he up was, because of durability, he, he, but not in terms of great production. He was one of the last guys I think that yeah. could get away with that. Yes, right? I, you that, know, that's that a good way of putting it. Good way of putting Curtis it. Martin and, you know, yep. those guys could get away with being 3.8, yep. 3.9 yard gotcha. carry yep. guys. You're just not going to get that anymore. Although, no. you look at Najee's rookie year, and his numbers aren't that far off as far as yards per carry. Right. Hey, great to have you with us. Great you're able to get up this morning and see the sunrise in Latrobe. Uh, well, it was a little rainy and cloudy, but hopefully we'll see the sun tomorrow. Well, great. I feel like now we're, we're in, into the Annie set here. <laughs> <laughs> sun will come up tomorrow. All right. Thanks, All right, Chris. Thank so Always much, great. Thank you. Soon.